Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anime Orange and welcome to the review video for the A-Wing model build from Metal Earth, a Star Wars model. One of the models that I had waited for for quite some time besides the Y-Wing which I've already built and done. Speaking of the Y-Wing, the Y-Wing was a rather challenging model with a lot of details packed into it. The biggest question I had on my mind when I started this model was, is it going to be as difficult as the Y-Wing build? And I would have to say no. It's still a challenging model. It still has a lot of detail to it. It's mainly focused around the side guns and the bits in the engine. But overall, I would confidently say that this is not as challenging a model as, say, this fantastic looking Y-Wing that we have here. But it is still a wonderful addition to the collection. It still is, it still does have its challenges to it, and it still took me three and a half hours to put this thing together. Now, maybe it doesn't seem as challenging because I have already built the Y Wing and I've already built the Iconics or Premium Imperial Star Destroyer, which was also a very detailed and challenging build. So maybe. It doesn't seem as challenging, the A-Wing doesn't seem as challenging now that I've done that stuff, but I just, the big thing is it didn't have as many tiny little delicate parts to put into place. It did still have them, but they were somehow easier to do. Like there are a lot of small parts in these side guns, which as you can see are kind of floppy, unfortunately. I could definitely use some uh, glue or laser, um, laser, UV laser glue to, or UV glue, not laser glue, UV glue to kind of hold the bits and pieces in place. But assembling it was just shaping a lot of cone and circular shapes and plugging them into each other and there you go. I could sit here and say it wasn't as difficult, it wasn't as difficult, but I should get into a little more detail. First of all, as I was building this model, one thing that Code Wookie from Metal Earth Builder warned me to do, and if you read his blog, you'll see that something that's easily missed and a little bit vague is these side bits bend down ever so slightly and the top actually has a little bit of a curve to it, just a little vague curve to it. It's not perfectly flat. And the bottom is the same way. The side bits bend up a little bit and the main body has a, just a vague little curve in it. And don't forget, it's, it'll be helpful if you remember to do that from the start. The top is really easy to, to, to understand how the sides are supposed to bend because you can look at it from the back and you have these side pieces that you'll see straighten up as you bend it down. The bottom doesn't have that. It's a little more challenging. I actually overbent it, but it was easy bending it back and not that big a deal. But the top is a little bit more important to get it, a little bit more helpful to get the top right the first go around. Now these side bits, I know that a lot of people have trouble getting that straight and mine are not perfect but not too terribly bad you have that gap there that just doesn't want to bend quite right when you curve the ends and even curving the edges of this can be a little bit challenging I have like these 3d printed tapered sticks that I've been playing around with that helped but aren't completely necessary to do it it just takes some time and patient to work patience to work that curve around not terribly difficult if you've been building a lot of Star Wars models already. It's not going to be that big of a deal. There's bits and pieces of trim that go on the top. No big deal. Fold and shape and stick them in their place. When it comes to the cockpit, the, the top part of the cockpit's a little wonky. And it's, it's thin pieces and it's easy to warp and shape it incorrectly. However, it's also easy to get it back into shape. And I, I was worried that I was going to completely mess up this cockpit area because when it comes to like aircraft and cockpits I always get very nervous with those and have difficulty with them but once I started plugging the slots in, or tabs into the slots it, it shaped itself right out and looks really good the inside seats and whatnot there's like parts 11 and 12 are a bit intimidating complicated to fold but taking one set up at a time it's no big deal and it all comes together nice and neatly then you get to these corner pieces in the back here there's like a little indented piece that has some details that you're trying to you, you put the pieces together fold it in 90 degrees and try to put it into these back corners inside they were a little funky to get into place and it took me a few tries I initially tried to over bend the bend instead of 90 degrees I bent it too much and then tried to fit it in and unfold it and that 
limited results. I tried to start by putting them back in first and then the side, and that didn't work. I found out the best thing to do is the back is actually too th on the, the back where it connects to the top body is two thin pieces, and one of them is more flexible. And I made sure to get that bottom tab in, then the side tabs, and then that top tab I can actually work the part around it to get it into place because it's small and thin and easily maneuverable not a big deal but it kind of stumbled me up for a few minutes and then you start building the guns kind of getting back to them it's just a lot of little circular pieces that come together connect to each other and you build up the thing you're really doing them in pairs you can do one at a time or you can build them together whichever way works for you I ended up doing them one at a time because initially I didn't realize I was it was the same thing for both sides and that they did in pairs. If I were to do that again, I might spend a little more time trying to put some sort of glue inside to hold it together. However, saying that, I did, after doing the first one, I went and did the second one. I tried to be more mindful of securing the tabs really tightly with everything I did, and still they ended up, I think this is the one that I spent more time on, but it's still a little bit floppy and not as secure. I mean, not still a little bit floppy, not completely secure, better than the other side, but just a mere notion that you're going to be bumping into it and still working with it as you complete other parts of the model you end up knocking some of it back loose even more i think it might actually be better to try to drop some thin glue in there later and hope is you know something just give it something to support it and let it dry that's just an annoyance i hate that it's so loose i know there's other people that are going to be like me i feel like there's only so much you can do to to prevent it you're pretty much going to have to fall back on some sort of glue to hold it in place after you're done. In part 27, I believe it's this part right here, it kind of has a square end on it. It's the most unique circular sh circular shape I've ever done. There's been plenty of times where I've shaped something into a circle, but then you had like a fin that stuck off that you had to kind of work around and then bend it back straight. In this instance, you're not making it into a complete circle because the end pieces form into a box shape that then close the circle, and it's actually easier to work with that that way. And different and interesting design but I, I rather I rather like that the way they did that and then I think the final thing that you do when you're putting on these top fins you, you shape and form these top fins and they have that circular end piece when you put those on like halfway down page five don't close that circular part at the end up I, will, I was in, instinctively I wanted to do that but you want to leave that open for right now because there's more that connects before you close that circle. So don't even bother trying to close it. Just get it into a general circular shape and don't worry about it just yet. Then you start working on the bottom piece, which is or the bottom section, which has just got some of the same detail as the top, some of the smaller detail, and a couple of like trim pieces that go into this little V and connect the two sides together. But you don't have the corner piece and the cockpit to worry about, so it is a little bit simpler. Then you start building the engine pieces, which for the most part, there's just a lot of circular or half circle shapes that connect together. Again, not complicated. Much like the guns, it's not complicated. It's just several different bits to put together and you can build them side by side in pairs because they're pretty much the same part, just mounted opposite of each other. There's like a half circle part or two in there that makes a difference, but not a huge difference. And then you've got this end bit that is covered up and you've got the engine bits inside. I really like that detail. That's a fantastic amount of detail. You build this like thruster bit that's down inside of this shielded part. It's You have to look at the right angle to see it and I don't know if this camera angle is going to catch it. I'll try to get other pictures of it. But I, one of the things I love is that sunk in, buried, kind of covered up detail that when, when the metal model companies do that. But one thing that I want to suggest, at least for your consideration, when you add, after you've added these engine bits on, or even possibly before you add them on, once you're done with the engine, somewhere before you start putting the two halves together, I would suggest go ahead and add, there's a ring that goes on the back, and it is part 59. I had to look down to see. I would suggest adding part 59, adding that ring on now, and before you start putting the two halves together either when you're done with the engines or after you put them on the bottom part the reason I say that is the thing that frustrated me absolutely the most in this model was 
They didn't do that, and I kind of think I know why. Don't exactly agree with it. They did it that way because when you attach the top and bottom halves, you're working all the tabs around the front. Don't forget the two tabs in the back. I did initially, and so did CodeWiki Metal Earth Builder. I had to go in afterwards and pry those into place. But you also have one tab on each fin that goes into this engine assembly and folds over or twists. And I initially folded it over, which pops out fairly easily. I wouldn't even bother with that. I would give it a twist. And then maybe fold it over. I don't know. It's up to you. But here's the thing. Because, I'm assuming, because you still have that tab to worry with that connects this together, they wait until after you've done that to add in the ring that goes on the back here. There's two rings on each, well, there's four rings, two on each side. Two of them go on the back of the engine. The other two go on this little bit of ring that hangs behind it. Getting that ring inside of there after this is on and in the way is a pain in the butt. And I would have much preferred to have added that ring on before bringing the two halves together and then using precision tweezers to go in there and grab and twist that tab somehow or fold it over, which with my tweezers I'm able to do. This is why I say take this in consideration for what your skill level is and what tools you have because maybe you don't have a tool that can reach up in there and grab that tab in that tight area. I do, and I was able to secure it well enough because they actually came loose as I was trying to fight to get that rear end piece on, which defeated the whole purpose of me waiting to put that ring on until after if they're just going to pop loose with me fighting with it because I had to fan out this outer ring and move stuff out of the way. and It made me unhappy, to say the least. We'll just say unhappy much rather would have preferred to put that inner ring on as I finish the engines or as I'm putting the engines on the bottom but before adding the top and bottom together have that out of the way sneak in pointed tweezers I have these nifty little Pixnor tweezers you can't even see the name on them anymore because I've used them so much it's worn off they normally have a very pointed end but I've stuck them to a grinding wheel for like a second or two to make a tip on them and they're excellent for reaching inside of tight areas and manipulating tabs and that's what I did. If you don't have a tool like this you might not want to do it this way but for me so much more sense to add that ring on and not have to fight with it later. Reach up in there once it's connected secure that tab then form these into a circle and put the last circular piece on the back which by the way they recommend folding it would be a much neater look but honestly two things by the time I got to that point I was not happy and was tired of dealing with it and number two I did try to fold these last two tabs on the rings over but they just kind of squished and warped the part because you're dealing with a very thin part that if you try to bend the tab over the ring itself is just going to kind of warp out the sides of it are going to kind of warp out as you're bending the tab rather than letting the tab bend and you don't have much room to counter that there if it was a thin part that had room around it that I could hold with one pair of tweezers and bend the tab over, that's different. And I could sort of do that, but I'm still going to end up holding it in an angle, and it's still not going to be right. And I said, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm just going to twist a tab and be finished. That's where I was at. What I'm suggesting is consider putting that part 59 in there first, then connect the two halves together. Then maybe you'll have more patience than me to get that ring more correctly. But other than that last little blunder, this was not that bad of a model. Again, it took three and a half hours to do. It was a lot of small bits to put together, but I, I enjoyed this model, at least until the very end when I got frustrated with it. Very much enjoyed this build. I'm very happy to have it in my collection. I've already said it in the build video. Now that I've got my X-Wing, now that I've got my Y-Wing, now that I've got my A-Wing, and honestly, I've got the speeder, which is over here on the table beside me. I'm going to have to work into a video soon. Speeder bike from Return of the Jedi. Now I want my uh, B-Wing. I want my B-Wing now. I've gotten just about everything else. It's time for the B-Wing. But the fantastic model. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's easier than the Y-Wing. It's easier than the Imperial Star Destroyer. I haven't done the First Order bike thing yet. So I got a feeling this is easier than that. Not as easy as DO. DO was pretty simple. Great one to start with if you're just wanting to warm yourself back up. 
this one's a good one to go maybe second in the warm yourself back up before you build the latest not even really the latest anymore because they're getting ready to come out with new ones but the rise of skywalker skywalker models and then there's just a matter of they put the stand in kind of a weird place and it's not just me i know other people have at least one other person has felt the same way but as i'm building the model and i'm doing the engines and then it's like oh suddenly let's just build the stand now and put that to a side it seemed really out of place i'm guessing they did that because it fit in that space better than fitting it on another page i don't know maybe it was a layout issue on the instructions but it was just kind of an odd you've almost completed the model but you still have a little bit to go and rather than leaving this to the end they just kind of crammed it there near the end it was an odd place whatever worked out okay one thing that i like to do at the end of these review videos that i forgot last time is is this whole looking back what would i do differently if i had this model to do again and number one would absolutely be part 59 i would put that on sooner rather than later i've already rattled on enough about that i would definitely do that sooner which would hopefully have given me the patience to maybe try to work out and get these tabs over who knows maybe some point i'll sit down and work those tabs fold them over in the back and make it cleaner looking probably not because i've said that about a number of the models behind me and I, I tend to move forward but that's one thing i would definitely do differently i might spend a little more time with some uv glue to try and secure these guns so they don't flop around so much because that is really bothering me and again i i said it already i could probably sit down with little drops of thin loctite drop a little bit of loctite in there and put something to support it and just let it dry and it would probably hold things in place well enough loctite does loctite can do pretty good after the fact especially the thin stuff if you're trying to get it into areas to help secure things i've done that numerous times it's not super secure but if you're going to put it on the shelf for display and you just don't want something to sag it works pretty good i want to say that i did that already with one of these connections and it helped but i didn't do it with the rest and maybe that's why this side is tips a little bit more sturdy i can't remember i'm a little happy though that this was not as difficult to say the y-wing of the imperial star destroyer it's an odd place to be where I really like the detail of the Y-Wing. I love that they put so much in it, but building it can be an almost overwhelming challenge at some points to the point where you start. To, I started to question, is all this detail really necessary? It, it almost detracts or begins to detract from the joy of the build, and this one didn't have that, so I did have more fun building it. Now, saying that about the Y-Wing, once it was done, it was something to look back and be super proud of. This is fantastic. It had a lot of detail and I got very frustrated here and there. But look how fantastic this is. Whereas this looks really good and really great. Doesn't have the same amount of detail. So it's a give and take. It, it was nice to kind of work on something that wasn't quite as challenging. And still have a nice looking model. But there is still the fact that the Y-Wing. While it has. It was a lot more challenging to put all that detail in the top of it. It looks just fantastic and i'm proud to say i put all that together it's just absolutely fantastic so it's it's kind of a give and take you know still worth it but it was nice to do something a little bit easier i'm gonna leave it at that i do want to thank my patreon supporters as usual for continuing to support this channel so that i have the funds to continue to get these models make these videos and and do what i am doing it's greatly appreciated thank you for watching as always if you have any comments or questions please leave them down below i do my best to get back to everybody if nothing else i and a simply thumbs up acknowledgement that i've seen your comment and like it don't always get to comment to every everything I, I spend a lot of time editing these videos and building these models so sometimes there's a limited amount of time to respond to everything but i do try feel free to leave them down below i enjoy reading them thank you very much and as always keep on keeping on